Now, the idea of retiring can cause quite a lot of anxiety. Where's the money going to come from? Who will look after me? What happens if something goes wrong? And what will I do all day long? But there's lots that you can do to prepare for retirement. And joining me now in the studio to talk about it all is Peter Holt from the Envisage Retirement Transition Initiative. Thanks very much for coming in, Peter. Now, it is a time that people kind of do get concerned about, but it's also retirement is something that's sort of changing now. It's not this kind of cliff that sort of you working one day and then the next you stop forever, is it? No, I mean, traditionally, we've lived a three-stage life, basically, where we've had a period at the beginning of our life, which has all been about education and preparing us for work. And then we have the main part of our life, which is our, our working life and our developing our career. Um, and then traditionally, at the age of 65, you stop working. And as you say, you fall off the edge of a cliff or it feels like that and you stop working completely. But now that's changed because there is no fixed retirement age. And for many people, their pensions aren't worth what they thought they were going to be. So a lot of people, if not most of us, are going to have to continue working a lot longer um, just to make ends meet. And in terms of that working a lot longer, some people, you know, will really embrace that. But other people will think, you know, actually, I, I just want a rest. How can you manage that so that it, it works however it is that you feel about it? Yeah, so what we're finding now is people are uh, looking at new ways of balancing out their, their work life um, commitments. So, so traditionally people would work right up until a retirement age. But now if people are going to be working until they're 70 or into their 70s, they're thinking, well, actually, I'd like to do something that I perhaps really enjoy doing. And can I earn some money out of that and balance that out with my work, my life commitments? So maybe looking after an elderly parent or, or grandchildren. Um, um, or they might say, actually, I really enjoy my job and I don't want to give up my job, but I'd like to maybe do some volunteering alongside that. So they may be looking to perhaps go three days a week in their job, so they've still got money coming in, a regular income coming in, but then doing something that's giving back to the community as well. So there are different ways of balancing that and out. Are employers open to that? Yeah, increasingly so, I think. I think employers now much more realise the value of older employers. So there's a lot of good research which shows that older employers actually have great customer service skills. They, they're really good at showing empathy um, and they have a lot of knowledge ex and experience which employers don't want to see go to waste. And for a lot of employers, there are skills gaps now. So in engineering, for example, there aren't enough engineers coming into the workplace. So it's really important for those employers to keep their older workers fit and healthy and with them longer. And if you're kind of worried about, you know, talking or engaging with your boss or with your employer about that, what's kind of the best way to go about it? I think it's being open and, and honest with your employer and, and having that um, mature conversation with them. And, and all good employers now, you know, want to have that conversation so that they can work through what's good for them as an employer, but also, you know, in caring for their employee, what's best for their employee and finding a way that they can meet those two demands. And I think one of the big things we've kind of touched on is this issue of money. People, you know, saving for retirement is really, really difficult, especially if you're not earning that much in the first place. How can, you know, people manage that? What's the best thing to do? Well, I watch um, Eat Well for Less and I'm amazed sometimes how much you can save on your, on your food and shopping bill. Um, and there, you know, if you can release some money from somewhere, then it's always good to save. Um, but if you can't, it's about finding better ways to make your money go further. So that could be like finding ways to save money on your food bill, um, or it could be getting together with other people to um, save money together by buying things in bulk. Um, so whatever it might be, um, it's important to try and do that and help. Um, what about the social aspect? Because I think a lot of people you know, get a lot out of the communication and the network and just kind of being at work with other people and there's that worry that you're going to stop working and then you're just going to be sat at home by yourself all day. How can people manage that? Yeah, it's, it's very important for a lot of us. Our identity is tied up in our work as well as those relationships as well. So when you leave work, um, you know, you, you leave a lot of that behind. So it's important to start developing new friendships, new relationships before you leave the workplace. And you can do that by getting involved in sport, getting involved in social clubs, um, so that you have not only some um, uh, activities that keep you interested, but also you can start developing those new friendships as well. And I think 
this sounds really silly, but a lot of people are nervous about going somewhere that they haven't been before and meeting people that they haven't met before. And there's that whole issue, you know, are they gonna are they gonna like me? And it's it's kind of like you know when you're at school, you get that worry, you know, are they going, are the kids gonna like me in the playground? And I think that doesn't always go away just because you've grown up. Well, are there any techniques that people can use to kind of get over those barriers and get out there again and meet other people and you know just get over the nerves? I, I think it's just just doing it, having the courage to do it. I mean, we had a, a lady on one of our um, workshops who was getting towards her late 70s. And, um, she, you know, she realised that she needed to do something. And she said, I've just got to get off my backside and do it. Um, and she went out and she got a, um, a, a rail car, which she hadn't had before, and started going out on, on, on days out. Um, and, and now she's got involved with her local library that's been coming a social enterprise. Um, and she's helping run that now. So, um, you know, if you, you know, take the, Take the take the steep the step of faith the leap of faith and and you'd be surprised what you can do and and that people will be very open and accepting and encouraging of you in doing that. And you've got a day coming up where people can find out more if they're kind of interested and they you know we haven't had much time to sort of talk about all of this stuff but if people want to find out more they can come along to this day what just tell us when that is and what's going on so we've got a one-day workshop which is happening at the central library in Portsmouth at uh, uh, Guildhall walk on the 3rd of September um, and that's specifically designed for people that that are on lower incomes that maybe don't have a lot of savings that are really sort of saying what do I do about the future and how do mm. I progress um, to try and put a plan together to make that better and do people just come along, just show up? Uh, they can do, but if they, they can book in, then we, then we can get a better idea of numbers because we are limited okay. on numbers in terms of space. Uh, so it's better that people either email us on our um, email, which is info at envisage.life, or that they give us a call. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you.